Bed leveling is one of those things that's really fundamental to getting your 3D print right. You have to have that nozzle to bed distance just right and really consistent across the bed in order to get that really good first layer that's going to stick for the whole duration of the print. One way to go about doing this is manual leveling where you have little screws on the bed and you manually adjust it until it's just about as close as you can get it. Another method is automatic bed leveling or mesh bed leveling which goes another step further. The type of sensor that I'm using on the extrudinator is an inductive probe. You can see it just right there. That will detect the presence of a metal, so ideally like aluminium or steel, and that will give you then a set distance which you can use to give you your mesh bed leveling results. However, it's affected by temperature. So you might say, well, just level the bed when cold and adjust a little bit for the offset. Well, yes, that solution often works a lot of the time, especially on smaller beds that are also thinner, but the large, thick aluminium bed that I've got here does have quite a bit of expansion theoretically during that heat up. So I think this is causing some problems with my leveling and so I need to level it when hot. So what I'd like then for the extrudinator is a bed sensor that's not temperature dependent. What I'm going with is a BL touch. So in order to mount the BL touch onto the printer and get it working there are a few things we need to do. Firstly, this was only set up for a four pin, I think actually three pin probe. Yeah, I did a four pin connector with only three pins. But the BL Touch needs six pins, I think six. So I'm gonna have to rewire, well, basically add more wires into this drag chain and this drag chain in order to be able to plug that in and wire it all in. So that's gonna be step one. The next thing I'm obviously gonna need is a suitable printed mount, so something that can mount under here instead of this clamp arrangement that I've got for this. I don't know what the requirements are in terms of height and stuff like that. I'm sure they're quite precise, so I need to make sure I get that right. And thirdly, I'm gonna to have to update the RepRap firmware which runs the Duet board. Lastly, we'll just do some testing. We'll run a mesh bed level just to make sure it works and maybe stick out a print and see if that whole bed surface issue that I seem to be having has been fixed by this. So I started by modifying the cables that come with the BL Touch. Obviously need a few connectors and pins to do that. First obviously cut the old ends off. I mean I could have just taken the pins out and used different connectors but I wanted to use the locking connectors. Then stripping the cables and crimping new ends onto those cables. I just repeated the same process for all five cables. Six cables, five cables, five cables. After adding the new pins, they just went straight into the connectors and that's that done. Next, I added another connector onto a pair of wires which I needed to add to the drag chain and started trying to slot it through the drag chain. This is not the easiest process to do and takes a little while. It gets a little bit fiddly, especially towards the end when there's a lot of friction on the cable and there's not a whole lot of space to do it. After poking one end through, the tailing end I cut off to the length I needed it and crimped another connector onto that. I then started a new length of cable and started slotting this through the other larger drag chain. Fortunately, when this one gets difficult, I can just open the tabs and it becomes much easier to access. Eventually, I got it through and it was not really that difficult. Now, where does it plug in? Um, to connect everything I've done so far, I first removed my adapter that I have for the inductive probe. I also decided to label some of these wires just so I remember which ones are which. I created two new adapters, a 3-pin one and a 2-pin one. The 3-pin one does 5 volts and ground plus the PWN control through heater 3. These first three all connect through the expansion headers on the main duet board. The 2-pin one is just the input and ground for the Z-probe and that plugs into the Z-probe header on the board. If I can just, there we go. So 
since there's plenty of space for cables, I'm not going to do very much cable management. All that's left to do is replace the cover and insert the screw to hold it in place. The next part of the process is the CAD design and 3D printing of the bracket. I like to start this process with a little bit of hands-on, just to get my head around how it's going to fit together relative to the parts I had before. So I removed the old sensor and just held it up in place just to see what sort of thing I'm going to be making. I then moved into CAD where I first drew up the actual BL Touch itself. That gives me an excellent reference model to work against so I don't forget any design factors such as the size and access that I need to various places, making sure I can pass the cables where I need to pass them. I then created a bracket that does look fairly similar to the one for the inductive probe. The only real modifications are at the bottom where instead of having a bit for a clamp for an inductive probe, I've just got these screws that hold the top of the bit out touch. I later removed the upper mounting slots and replaced them with holes just to ensure that I get the 8mm distance between the BL Touch body and the tip of the nozzle to be correct. After creating my designs, I moved them all into my assembly model just to double check that everything fits in place. Next I used Prusa Slicer to slice the model and print it out on my Ender 3. It's printed out of black PETG from Usness with a 15% infill, two perimeters and 0.2mm layers. The print took approximately 36 minutes, which is not too bad at all. While we're waiting for this to print, don't forget to leave a like if you've enjoyed the content so far and subscribe if you want to see more. The last part of our project today is to configure the RepRap firmware. There is a very thorough guide on the Duet 3D website, so I followed through that. While there is a lot of information there, which makes it quite intimidating, if you follow through the steps bit by bit, it's not too bad. Before doing any major modifications to the firmware, I selected all the files from the system editor and downloaded a zip file so that I had a backup. The next part of the process was to go into the config.g gcode file and to identify the location of the Z probe settings. These are the ones that I have for my inductive probe, so the first thing I'm going to do is just simply comment them out. Now I can start adding the settings I need for my BL touch. M307 is used to disable the heater on H3, M558 tells it the type of probe it is and how fast it needs to move, and G31 is the type of end stop that we're using. My probe is mounted in exactly the same place as my inductive probe, so I'm just going to copy over the value for that. To ensure that the H3 heater doesn't get re-enabled, we're going to comment it out in the config override.g file. The last thing we need to do is add a deploy probe.g file and a retract probe.g file. Now we can move on to calibration and testing. So typically this would now be the point that I tell you I did a whole load of testing and it turns out that it works excellently well and everything has gone absolutely fantastic. However, that's not the case in this instance. I've had one or two troubles trying to get this BL Touch to actually work. I can deploy the probe just fine. I can retract the probe just fine. But when I try and run the test code, it does this. So yeah, it's basically just immediately triggering, but also not triggering. So it's not sending a like Z probe trigger to the control board, which is a problem. And it also immediately retracts, which is also a problem. If I press deploy and try and push the pin just a very tiny little bit to see if it will immediately retract as it should, it doesn't do that. So I think my BL touch is unfortunately broken. If you have any suggestions on how I may be able to fix this, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I have got another BL Touch coming, so fingers crossed that one works. If it doesn't, then maybe a little more investigation will be required. 
when that arrives i'll be taking another look at this whole situation so don't forget to subscribe to make sure you see that thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video